Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. This is an introductory tutorial on a new 3GPP release 17 feature called RATCAP or Reduce Capability New Radio. This feature was earlier known as NR Light and you will see two different spellings here. Some of the slides in this presentation are from when the feature was first introduced. So when you see NR light, it also refers to RATCAP, the updated name of this feature. As this feature is related to the devices, the devices are also called as low complexity 5G NR devices. This feature was first introduced as a 3GPP release 17 study item in 3GPP RAN meeting number 84 which was held back in June 2019. The study is detailed in 3GPP Technical Report 38.875. You can find the references and the link at the end of this presentation. The slides are available on our SlideShare channel. Just want to point out here that the TR 38.875 is over 130 pages long and has loads of details. If you want to seriously study this topic, you need to download the report. A year back, this is how 3GPP release 15, 16 and 17 timelines look like. We were expecting a release 17 freeze in June 2021, followed by ASN freeze in September 2021. Because of ongoing pandemic, the release 17 timeline is now completely outdated. This is a more up-to-date release 17 timeline. We can expect the features to be frozen in March 2022. This slide highlights the features released as part of release 15 and 16. Release 17 content used to look like this. The flashing star is to highlight NR light. This is how the 3GPP release 17 features list looks today. Note that the flashing star is to highlight NR reduced capability or low complexity devices. We are going to look at some spider diagrams here to help us understand this feature better. We produced a video on spider diagrams earlier. If you do not understand them or don't know what they are, please check out our tutorial. Link is in the top right corner. This is the Enhanced Mobile Broadband or EMBB spider diagram. As you can see, the emphasis is on the peak data rates with a reasonable low latency and reasonable high reliability. On the other hand, for URLLC, there is a very high emphasis on low latency as well as a high reliability. We expect finite reliability and the requirements from 3GPP release 16 is for 6 nines. We have a nice tutorial on this topic. See top right for the link. EMBB and URLLC devices can be considered as high-end premium UEs. We can summarize the requirement of these UEs as shown in the table here. This table is originally from the Qualcomm document whose reference is provided at the end of this presentation. As we discussed, the main difference between them is the data rates, latency and reliability. While we do not have any commercial URLLC devices in the market, smartphones and fixed wireless access devices are examples of premium 5G UEs. Moving on to the IoT part, you can see from the spider chart LTEM and NB-IoT devices offer similar capabilities. While LTEM is able to support higher data rates, the trade-off is that the battery life is lower and the cost is higher. So going back to the table, we can now see the requirements of very low-end devices that would be used for low power, wide area, massive machine type communications. Similar to what we saw in the spider charts, the device complexity requirement is very low, which would keep the cost down, 
and also contribute to a very long battery life. Important to note here that while coverage requirement for EMBB and UR LLC is normal, the coverage requirement for IoT devices are extreme. This is mainly because in many cases, the IoT device will only transmit once. If there is no reception, the message will get lost. For reliable reception, the IoT devices do transmit with a much higher power as compared to normal cellular transmission. So here is the combined spider chart with EMBB, UR LLC, LTM and NB IoT. So at this point, let's look at what kind of devices are included in NR Red Cap. As you can see in the slide from Qualcomm, there is a requirement for devices that fall in between EMBB, UR LLC and massive machine type communications. Examples of these include variables, sensors, cameras, relaxed IoT, etc. One can argue that EMBB devices, for example, could, be serve, could also serve as variables or sensors or cameras, etc. But it doesn't make sense and this, would, uh, this is the void that REDCap is trying to fill in. So what are the different types of NR REDCap devices? IWSN industrial wireless sensor networks. So examples of this would be microphones, CO2 sensors, pressure sensors, humidity sensors, thermometers, cameras, video cameras, etc. Variables and low end variables. Relaxed IoT. Different terminology for red cap being used includes low tier 5G UEs, IWSN as we just saw, and mid-end IoT. So I guess the question that many people will have here is why not use LTE instead of 5G for these kind of devices. So to preempt discussions like these, Nokia provides an answer in this slide. The main reason being there is no need to support different kind of networks, especially in the long run when some operators are going to try and move everything over to 5G. So, you know, we are still talking about 2028, 2030, right? But it's better to point it out here. The other being that 5G NR provides better system efficiency. It should also be noted that while 5G can work in all 4G bands, 4G cannot work in all 5G bands. This slide from Ericsson is talking about requirements for connected industries. Ericsson believes REDCap is very important to meet the industrial IoT or IIoT requirements. This slide from Nokia is similarly highlighting the industrial use cases and pointing out where UR LLC is required where EMTC and NBIoT are required and where REDCap has a role to play. So remember, as I said, this is a slightly older slide. So instead of REDCap, it says NR Light. So looking at the complete table for the low tier 5G UEs, which we discussed is another name for REDCap devices, starting with industrial sensors and video monitoring. So we can see that there are no special requirements for these kind of red cap devices. While the bandwidth requirement for the premium 5G UEs is wide and that for very low end devices is narrow, the bandwidth requirement for red cap devices will be medium. Fortunately, there is a native feature in 5G called the bandwidth parse that allows devices to have a lower bandwidth than the one that network supports. Then you have the low end variable that have lower data requirements and low device complexity. This would be mainly because these variables require a long battery life. Finally, we have the relaxed IoT. If you compare it with the very low-end IoT that is LTM or EMTC 
and NB IoT, you will notice that RedCap relaxed IoT devices would have higher reliability and data rate support, while the battery life won't be as long as the traditional IoT or MTC devices. So if we draw a spider diagram, RedCap devices will support a reasonably low latency and reasonable reliability. Again, a reasonable peak data rate support and no requirement for very high coverage. The devices would be reasonably low cost, but the battery life won't be as good as in the case of other LPWA devices. If we put all the spider diagrams together, then we can actually compare all that we have been discussing. You can see the argument why the industry feels that the existing three types of devices, that is the EMBB, URLLC, and MMTC devices cannot meet all the 5G use cases. And there is a need to introduce a category in between all these three. This item has been studied for release 17 and now we have it as part of the specifications. This table from Ericsson nicely summarizes the difference between baseline 5G devices and the red cap devices. Look at the table carefully as we will quickly look at some of the future enhancements being discussed in release 18 after this slide. The bandwidth of red cap devices has been reduced for FR1 from 100 MHz to 20 MHz, while for FR2, it has been reduced from 200 MHz to 100 MHz. So FR1 and FR2 is the frequency range 1 and frequency range 2. Okay. The minimum number of device receive branches, maximum number of downlink MIMO layers, maximum downlink modulation order have all been reduced to make the red cap devices simpler less power consuming and even cheaper. The red cap device may implement only a half duplex FDD, which means possible removal of TX and RX filter. This in turn would reduce the coupling loss in case of uh, the RX reduction in volume and cost for TX and a lot more. A red cap device is also expected to operate in a single band at a time and will not support carrier aggregation and dual connectivity. In the recently concluded RAN Release 18 workshop, Nokia presented this slide as a suggestion for Release 18 enhancements. As you can see, they are proposing that the red cap device be simplified further to reduce cost complexity and power consumption. So, this would mainly be like uh, the reduction uh, in the maximum bandwidth to 5 megahertz, uh, reduction in the peak data rates, etc, etc. Apple, on the other hand, is proposing to make the enhanced red cap device slightly more complex by introducing flexible bandwidth. Also, some of the red cap uh, features that couldn't be covered as part of release 17 can now be added to the enhanced red cap devices uh, as part of release 18. Finally, this slide from Xiaomi summarizes what many companies are looking for as red cap enhancements going in the future. The three main ones being support for positioning, side link and operation in unlicensed spectrum. Here are the references and further study links. As always, all our slides are available on our SlideShare channel. The link is in the description or you can go to 3G4G webpage and go to the links from there. So we hope you like this short tutorial on this new feature. As always, please feel free to leave your feedback or any comments, suggestions, corrections, etc. Thank you and hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.